This conference will now be recorded. Okay, uh, let's start. <clears throat> so, in the last class, uh, we have discussed what interactive classical reporting. So, we have done all these three levels. And as part of this, uh, we have handled one event called as what? Uh, at line selection. Okay, and the content of the selected line is stored in the system field SY event LISCL. Okay, and from that from that particular system field SY event LISCL, in this particular list, we are extracting the customer number. Here we are extracting the sales document number, and here we are extracting the material number. Okay, so we got the material number, right? So we have identified the interacted value by referring to the system field what uh, SYFN LI SCL. Okay, so from this system field only, uh, we are extracting the required content. In the first list, we have extracted customer number. In the second list, we have extracted the sales document number. And in the third list, we have extracted the material number. Okay. <clears throat> right so in the last class uh, we had one issue anyone got chance to look into this uh, yes anyone uh, got opportunity to work on this so what was the issue we have faced here when you are double click on the material number we got the material number but here we are having this issue okay so even i also didn't uh, check on that i was out of station i'll check it today but you people also anyone try it recorded okay just try it today I, I, I'll also... I'll also... please mute your speakers yeah so now uh let me make a copy of this program yes, please mute speakers Hello. Mutual speakers, I'm getting disturbance. Okay, right. Let me make a copy of this program. This 51, I'll copy to 52. Yeah, so this particular program contains two include programs. It is asking whether to copy these includes also. Yeah, I'll do one thing. Let me make a copy of this. I'll rename it to different names. One second, please.
I'll make it, uh, I'll rename this includes. In the earlier program, the include names are 51. So I'll rename it to something 52. Here also 52. Let me select both of them. Copy. So includes. I'm getting disturbance, please. I don't know who is that. Please mute your speakers. Yeah. So this is a 52nd program. Yeah, I'll make the necessary changes. Let me activate each and every include. So the change I'll do is, so in all these three lists, what we have done is uh, to identify the selected value, uh, we know that the event triggered is what? At line selection. As part of that event, we are referring to the system field what? SY fun li SEL. That particular system field contains the content of the entire line. It contains the content of the entire line. From that content, we are extracting what? Year customer number, year we're extracting sales document number, year we're extracting material number. Okay, there are two more ways to identify the selected value. So what I'll do is just try to focus. So in case of, in case of first subroutine, uh, here we are displaying, we are getting the customer data and we are displaying the customers, okay? So whenever we double click on any of the line in the basic list, the event triggered is what? At line selection. So in the at line selection, by referring to the system field SY and LACL, we are extracting the portion of the string. We are extracting the customer number. We got the customer number and we have displayed the sales orders. Okay. So this is your sales orders. Now here what I will do is, when I double click anywhere here, here also the event triggered is what? At line selection. So instead of referring to the system field SY fun LISL, I'll go for other technique. So what is that other technique means? So here, this next list is based on what sales document number. Na? We have to identify the sales document number. Based on that sales document number only, we have to get the item data and display it. So the next list is based on what sales document. So the change I'll do is, while displaying that sales orders, where I'm displaying the sales orders, here only we are getting the sales orders, we are displaying the sales orders. So while displaying the sales orders, as part of loop and loop, I will use a statement called as ID statement. ID W underscore sales orders, iPhone and what, Weblen. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm just hiding the sales document number. Okay, so what this ID statement will do is, see here, try to understand this concept of ID statement. So this is the list we are seeing, nothing but, this is nothing but your LPS, list to processing screen. Okay, so list to processing screen. So what I'll do is, first let me display it for our purpose. Let me execute. So these are my customers. When I double click on this, we have displayed the sales orders. Okay, so these are the sales orders. Where I use that ID statement, I have used the ID statement inside the loop. After the right statement, we have used what ID statement. What you are doing using ID statement, we are saying ID so and so webland. So what this ID statement will do is try to understand. Yeah. So what is the sales document displayed here? Four nine. 715162 all those things so this is your what 4971 this is 5162 because right statement will display the result on what output screen list to processing screen so what are the right statement i used it will display the content here 5195 uh, 5196 5234 5267, 
फाइव टू नाइन सेवन वॉट एल्स फाइव थ्री डबल फोर लाइक दिस वी हैव डिस्प्लेड सम डेटा बाई यूजिंग वॉट राइट स्टेटमेंट राइट स्टेटमेंट विल डिस्प्ले द आउटपुट ऑन वॉट लिस्ट प्रोसेसिंग स्क्रीन इमीडिएटली आफ्टर द राइट स्टेटमेंट वॉट आई यूज आई यूज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज आइड स्टेटमेंट सो वॉट दिस आइड स्टेटमेंट विल डू इज देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज आइड मेमरी एरिया there is something called as id memory area which is invisible memory invisible memory area means we cannot see it physically it is invisible memory area what you have done here id so and so id so and so field so whatever the web lens we have displayed on the output screen okay the same web lens the same web lens we have written it to what id memory area we have written it to id memory area what is the field we have written w underscore sales or rifle web lens so that is the field that we are writing in the id memory area so what the id statement will do write statement write statement will display the result on what lps that we can see id statement will maintain that value in id memory area which is invisible we cannot see it but internally this is the data maintained in the id memory area on the output screen we are displaying web lens we are displaying the date we are displaying the time and what name of the person who has created all the four columns we are displayed here but in the id memory area we are writing only what one field now what happens is okay so just here right so whatever i am able to see here i am able to see all the four columns weblen erdat erzd er name okay out of this four columns which column value we have written it to id memory area w underscore sales order siphon weblen so what are the data i displayed here what are the weblen i displayed here the same data is also available in what id memory area which is invisible to us we cannot see it but just you have to visualize that there is something called as id memory area in the id memory area we have maintained all the sales orders what is the field we have maintained w underscore sales orders if and web lens now i'll double click on some line i'll double click on what some line okay so here i'll double click on what some line suppose if i double click on this what is the corresponding sales document 5234 so already we know whenever we double click anywhere on the list what is the event triggered at line selection so here also when i double click assume that i'll double click on this line what is the corresponding sales document five two three four so whenever i double click so assume that in the run time i'll double click on this particular five two three four whenever i double click on this five two three four or anywhere on the line what is the event triggered at line selection event is what triggered okay so assume that here the user try to understand the user interacts user interacts with this particular content so when are the user interacts what happens sap will trigger sap triggers what event sap triggers at line selection event sap triggers at line selection event and sap clears sap clears all the content all the content from what id memory area sap will clears all the content from what id memory area and maintains only one value maintains only one value where the user has done the where the user has done the what interaction where the user has done the interaction so what happens now the moment i click on this anywhere in the line sap triggers what at line selection event so what happens to rest of the values in id memory area everything will be cleared but it will maintain only one value it maintains only one value where the user has done the interaction where the user has done the interaction here 5 2 3 4 only this value will be what maintained and this value will be stored in this particular what field what is that field w_sales_what 
Weblet. Okay, so this interacted value is stored in that particular field w underscore sales order fm weblet. Now, what is the agenda? Based on this value only, we have to get the sales items and display. Na? Understood? So, the understanding is based on whichever column value the next list is based that particular field we have to write it in the id memory area how do you write it by using what id statement so whatever the sales documents i'm able to see here all the sales document is also there in what id memory area but when the user interacts with any of the value all the values in the id memory area will be destroyed except what one value where the user has done the interaction and based on that value only and that value is stored in what the field in which you have written the uh, the field which you have written to the id memory area based on this variable value only the next list is based now so what i'll do now here okay we have done what id statement now i have to handle which even no at line selection went to i'll not go for this part now what i'll do now i need not refer to the system field directly what i'll do get the sales items for the selected sales documents so i'll directly double click on the subroutine what i'll do yeah here this is also not required unpack is also not required i'm directly getting the data into the item internal level where weblen equal to what not v underscore weblen what is the field we have written into the id memory area w underscore sales orders hyphen weblen w underscore sales orders hyphen weblen that is the field we have written to the id memory area okay based on that field only we are getting the next list values we are getting the next list values okay so the only change we have done is in the second list instead of referring to the system field sy if an lisl we are refer we are referring to the field called as what w underscore sales orders hyphen weblen based on that only we are getting the item data okay so let me execute and check once I'll double click on 1001 double click on something this one 5234 yes i got the item data 5234 let me go back i'll double click somewhere here this one what is the corresponding sales document triple five zero yes i got two items so working fine five six double seven five one nine five done working fine so what you have done here i repeat this once again when I'm displaying the sales orders, when I'm displaying the sales orders, okay, while displaying in the loop in end loop itself, we have used a statement called as ID statement. Why we have written only this field? Because the next list is based on this field value only. Na? So on whichever field value the next list data is based, that field we have to maintain in the ID memory area by, by using what statement? ID statement. So I, this loop will be iterated for some hundred times, for example. So ID statement gets executed hundred times. Means hundred different sales orders are maintained in the ID memory area. Okay. When the list is displayed to the user, when the user does the interaction, SAP triggers the at line selection event and it refreshes what? ID memory area except one value where the user has done the interaction. Based on that value only, we are getting the next list data. We are getting the next list data. So here what you can do next now. Okay. Now I have to display what? MM03. I have to display the MM03. So the next uh, what screen is based on what material number. Na? So where I am displaying the sales items here. Here only. Na? While displaying the sales items. Here also I can say what? I'd, I'd what? W underscore sales items. Iphone. MAT NR, MAT NR. So that material number will be maintained in the ID memory area. So what I'll do now, yeah, when three, here I need not refer to the system field. I need not refer to the system field. Directly I'll say, what? Set parameter ID field. What is that field? W underscore sales items, iPhone what? Material number. Understood? Because whenever that event is triggered, it refreshes all the material number except the material number where the user has done the interaction. So based on this field only, the next screen is based. That's the reason I'm saying set parameter ID field so and so. So now 
when I execute, let me check it. I'll double click on 1002. I'll double click on this one. This is item data. I'll go back. I'll double click on this. Let me double click on M18. Oh, I got M20. Why was M17? I got M20. M19. Why like that? M11, this is okay. M04, yeah, this is okay. M19, okay. M11, yes, okay. M10, fine. So, problem is I have not activated the main program initially. So, I got the material number. Understood? So, based on whichever field, the next list is based. Based on that field, I can use what? I can write what? ID statement. Based on that only, I am writing the logic for the next screen. Is it clear ID statement? So to understand this, ID statement will write the value to the ID memory area, which is invisible. This ID memory area gets refreshed whenever the outline selection event is what triggered. Whenever the outline selection event is triggered. And SAP will clear all the values except the value where the user has run the interaction based on that value only the next list is what based any questions any questions Done. Okay, so this is about what ID statement. There is one more way also. So what I'll do now is instead of using the ID technique, okay, or else let me keep this as it is. I'll make a copy of this program, or else let me do it here only. Yeah, here only I'll do it. So what I'll do is instead of using the ID statement, let me go for, let me go for, yeah. So see this. What we are doing now, here we are using what? ID statement, we are maintaining the material number in the ID memory area. Let me remove the ID statement. See what I'll do. So here, when three, what I'll do is get the, get the field name and field value where the user has done the interaction, where the user has done the interaction get the field name and field value where the user has done the interaction so see the technique here what i'll do is let me declare some two variables i'll go to this include i'll declare some two fields here let me declare data what v underscore field name type string v underscore field value type what string so i declare what two variables of type what string field name type string field value type string let me activate this yeah, see the technique here what i'll do is yeah when three when three here i'll say get cursor get cursor field v underscore field name value value field value okay now what i'll do if v underscore field name is equal to when you are looping what is the material number field here w underscore sales items hyphen m a t n r so if v underscore field name is equal to what w underscore sales items hyphen material number then only do the do this logic so here i'll say field what 
field g underscore f value, field g underscore f value, call transaction so and so, else, else, I'll just give a message, please select material only, please select material only, type what I, end it. So let me check whether I'll get any syntax errors or runtime errors. I'm getting a syntax error, G underscore, it's not G underscore, it is V underscore. Here also it is V underscore, not G underscore. Save it, check it, okay. I got an error, V underscore F value must be a character type field. V underscore F value must be a character type field. Data type C, N, D, R, T. Control structure introduced by interface, okay. V underscore F value must be a character type field. It should be the data type character, alphanumeric, date or time it seems. But I declare this V underscore F value as what? Type what? String. I declare it as type string. So what I'll do is, okay, let me go back. Let me declare that field. Data V underscore material number type, type what? VBAP hyphen material number done. Activate this. Activate this include forcefully. Come back and here I'll say I'll say V underscore material number. V underscore material number is equal to what? V underscore F value. And here also I'll say V underscore MAT NR. Let me check, then I'll explain. V underscore F value is unknown. Save it, check it, no syntax error, done. Activate this, activate the all includes. First, let me explain. M19 working fine, M04 working fine, LATC working fine. Now, one small change I will do. When I displayed the item data here, when I display the item data, what I want is, I want the odd spot to be displayed on this material number. Means, when I move the cursor on this data, when I move the cursor on this material number, I should get the odd spot and symbol. I should get the odd spot and symbol. So, it will be easy for the user. Uh, what? It is understood that the user has to click on what? Has to select what? Material number. So, for user convenience, I want to display this material number as what? Odd spot. So simple statement. While displaying this item data, where I am displaying the item data, yeah, somewhere here I am displaying the item data. As part of this material number, in the right statement only, as part of this material number, I will say odd spot on. After the field, I will say what? Odd spot on. So when I say odd spot on, see now. When I move the cursor on this uh, web line, I'm not getting the hotspot. Item number, I'm not getting the hotspot. But here you can say I'm getting the AND symbol. So what is the advantage of this hotspot means? Only single click. If it is not a hotspot, the user has to double click. Suppose here, 30 is there. What is the corresponding material number? L60Y. Let me double click on this 30. Please select what? Material only. Right? I'll double click on this one. Because I wrote the logic like that. What is the logic I wrote? See, when I click on this, yes, I got the transaction MM03. So first thing what I did is, while displaying the item data, I said hotspot on, so that the AND symbol will be displayed when the cursor is moved on the material number. Next, what I did, so whenever we click on, whenever we double click, or whenever we click on the hotspot value, what is the event triggered? Same event, at line selection. I repeat, whenever we double click or whenever we click on the hotspot value, the event triggered is what? At line selection. So when three, see what I'm doing. I'm using a statement called as get cursor. What is the purpose of this get cursor statement? It will return the field name and field value where the user has done the interaction. Let me put the breakpoint here. Okay, so one more thing. This variable is a what type? String type. And this variable is also what type? Both should be what type? String type only. That's why I declared both the things as what string. So I gave the breakpoint here. Now see the execution. Done. 
I got the I got the item data. Now let me double click on this 20. So the user is interacting with what? PYSNR, item number. What is this? Uh, we are in the loop and displaying this now. What is this field value? W and what is the field name? Sorry, not value. Value is 20 only. Field name is what? W underscore sales items hyphen PYSNR. So when I double click, done. Okay, so see here. V underscore F name is blank. V underscore FL is blank. So when this statement is executed, what this get cursor will do? Get cursor will return the field name and the field value where the user has done the interaction. So when I say F5, good. What is the field name? W underscore sales items hyphen PO SNR. What is the field value? 20. Okay. So I want the restriction that the user has to click only on what material number. So I'm checking whether the field name is equal to material number, but the field name is what item number. So if condition is failed, control goes to else part. I'll get the message what so and so message. Please select what material only done. Now let me double click on this L60. Why not? Not double click because I get hot spot. If you are not given the hot spot, yes, I should do double click. But since I get the hot spot, it's only single click. So when I click on this, done. What is the field name now when I say F5? What is the field name? Material number. What is the value? So and so. I'm checking. If field name is equal to so and so. Yes, condition is satisfied. Okay. So this field value I declared as what type? Type string it seems. Type string. But the set parameter ID will take this as only what? Either character, alphanumeric or data type. That's why I have assigned this string to what type? To material type. Because... This set parameter statement will take only what? Either character or alphanumeric or date or time. It will not take string, it seems. Initially, I directly said field V underscore F value. But V underscore F value is declared as a string. That's why I declared another variable V underscore MATNR, which is of type material number, which is a character of 18. So I have assigned to what? That V underscore MATNR. Both are what? L60 by now. I'm setting the parameter ID. I'm calling the transaction. So what is the advantage of what is the advantage of this get cursor? By using get cursor, we can identify the field name where the user has done the interaction. Means by using it get cursor, we can restrict the user to interact only with a specific column on the list. In the earlier two cases, what happened? Wherever I double click, the event is triggered. Wherever I double click, I'm extracting what? Customer number here. Even if I double click on Omega, what is the corresponding customer? 1002. So based on that 1002, I got the sales orders. Here also I can double click anywhere. But what is the logic we wrote here? Write statement. The corresponding field we have added is what? Web line. So even if I double click on this, what is the corresponding web line which you have added? 5017. Based on that value, we are getting the value. We are getting the next list. But here, the advantage of get cursor is we are restricting the user to interact only with a particular list column on the output screen. If the user double clicks or interacts with any other value, we are prompting a message to select only appropriate column value. I got M03. So whether we double click or whether we select the hotspot value, the event triggered is what? At line selection only. At line selection only. In how many ways we can identify the selected value? Three different ways. By referring to the system field SYF and LICL, by using ID statement, and by using what? Get cursor statement. Get cursor statement will return the field name and field value where the user has done the interaction. So before I use them, let me just clear and use it. So, any questions, please ask. Any questions? Right. Now, in the same program, so we have handled three events so far. What are they? are four events including start of selection four events start of selection top of page top of page in line selection and what at line selection so we know the top of page is used for what 
generating adding for basic list and top of page using line selection is for generating adding for what secondary list generating adding for what secondary list so now what i want is i want to generate the footer i want to generate the footer for for basic list as well as for the secondary list so in order to generate the footer we need to handle a event called as end of page so we have a event i can handle it anywhere okay so i'll say end of page what is the purpose of this end of page event to generate footer to generate footer for the basic list as well as for the secondary list so i'll say right right okay i'll just give some i want to start the line from 15th line i'll say something something like this this is my what footer notes how many lines i'm generating the footer two lines so let's see whether the event is generate uh, triggered or not so what is the event i'm handling end of page so when i execute no i didn't got any footer for the basic list let me double click on what uh, customer number this is my secondary list secondary list one if i scroll down I don't have footer for this list also. Let me double click on some sales document number. I got second list two. Here also I didn't got any, didn't got any footer. So what is happening is this event is not getting triggered. This event is not getting triggered. This event will be triggered only when the control reaches end of page. This event is triggered only when the control reaches end of page so we need to instruct sap how many lines you want to reserve per page whenever we handle the end of page event we need to instruct sap how many lines you want to reserve per page so what i'll do as part of this report statement i will say i'll use one addition called as as part of report statement line count i'll say something uh, 10 of 10 of 2, 10 of 2, or 10 of 3 also. I'll say 10 of 3. So what is the meaning of this 10 of 3? Okay, here and at the end of page, I will use one underline also. Okay, so what is the meaning of this 10 of 3? 10 lines per page, 10 lines per page. Out of 10 lines, the last three are for what? Footer. Out of 10 lines, the last three are for footer means seven lines for the body and the last three lines for footer so seven plus three is what ten lines so after every seventh line end of page will be triggered that is the meaning so when i execute now see you know when i execute this is my basic list yeah you can see i got the footer so one this is one line one underline is also one line two three four five six seven Right, so after seventh line, end of page event is triggered. I go underline in the end of page. I got these three lines again: one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why I got like this? Let me double click on 1002. Yeah, here also if you check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, after seventh line. Next year also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes. After seventh line, I got it. Done. Working fine. Anything I did in customers data? Actually, I gave U line here also. Okay, done, done, done. Okay, here also I gave U line. That's the issue. Okay, I'm unable to see that. So now if you see, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, done. Then one, 
two, three, four, five, six only. Six only means I am not getting further data. Since the seventh line is not reached, the end of page event is not triggered. Understood? Since the seventh line is not triggered, seventh line is not reached in the second page, end of line is not triggered. Okay? So if I increase the customer range, I would get it. I'll give 1030. When I execute, yeah, you can see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. End of page is triggered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I got the end of page. Then again, one, two, three, four. That's all. End of page is not triggered because only four lines are available in this page. So end of page is not only for basic list, it is for all the list. In every list after seventh line, in every list after seventh line, end of page event is triggered. So I got the data. Here it is not triggered because it has not reached the seven lines. That is the meaning. It has not reached the seventh line. So, you know what? Whenever we handle end of page event, you must, you must reserve what? Number of lines per page. I said 10 of 3. Now, one more thing I can do here. I'll say 10 of 2 only. Means 10 lines per page. Out of 10 lines, the last two are for footer. So, you are reserving only two lines for footer. But you are generating three lines. Underline is also one line. One, two, three. Three lines you are generating. So what happens? The gens of technologies will not be displayed, I think. See, when I execute, yeah, you can see I got underline SAP training. I didn't got the gens of technologies. Here also I got underline SAP training. So you have to reserve ample number of lines for what? Footer. Otherwise, the rest of the lines will be suppressed. It will not give any error, but the rest of the lines will be suppressed. So end of page event is a end of page is a event triggered in basic list as well as in secondary list whenever the end of page is and whenever the end of page is reached. Whenever we handle the end of page event, we have to use the addition what line count. By using that line count addition as part of report statement, we can specify the number of lines per page. So this indicates 10 lines per page. Out of 10, the last three are for what? Footer. Hope it's clear to everyone. Any questions here? You will have one issue here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll do it in the same program. You will have one issue. What is the issue means? Okay. Yeah. In the top of page event. Yeah, I'm reserving how many lines in the top of page? Two lines. I'm reserving in the top of page two lines. U line and what? So and so. Okay, done. Now I'll say here four of two. What is the meaning of this? Four lines per page. Out of four lines per page, the last two are for what? Footer. The last two are for what? Footer. So, two in the body, two in the footer. But what are the two lines are reserved in the body? The two lines are already consumed by top of pain. Top of pain event itself will take what? Two lines. Then there is no space left for the content to be displayed in the body. So, see what happens. When I execute this, good. I got the runtime error. See what I, what is the runtime error. So we should be very careful when you're using this line count option. What is the error I got? Runtime error. List to list to top of page overflow. List to top of page overflow. List to page overflow. Page header what? Too large. The page header of a list page is larger than the page itself. Okay, see the error analysis. The number of lines per page, the number of lines per page was agreed with two. I give four of two. Four of two means what? Four lines per page. The last two are for footer. So per page only two lines. Huh? The body part is only two. The number of lines per page was agreed with two. These lines have already been used up on the current page one by the top of page event. It is therefore not possible 
to fit the entire page header on one page okay so we should be very careful when you are using the line count option okay so here let me give something what okay that's that's it okay so this will give me what runtime error runtime error so let me go for this only this will work fine this will work fine okay working fine so what are the events we have seen top of page top of page during line selection end of page event and at line selection event whenever we use end of page event you must you must use addition what line count by using the line count option we can instruct sap how many lines it has to reserve per page and in that lines how many lines should be reserved for footer okay and we should be very careful when you are using the line count option because the number of lines reserved if it is already consumed by top of page event or top of page during line selection event it leads to what runtime error because there is no space to display the body content to fit the body content right so i'll just summarize whenever we double click or whenever we click on the hotspot on the list the event triggered is what at line selection and how do we identify the selected value elements three different ways by referring to the system field syf and lisl or by using the id statement or by using the get cursor statement syf and lisl will store the entire line content from that entire line content we have to extract the portion of the required field i have to extract the portion of the data okay and that is done by using what offset logic and id statement is generally used as after the right statement id statement is generally used after the right statement id statement will write that field value into the id memory area this id memory area gets refreshed whenever the at line selection event is triggered and sap will maintain only one value where the user has done the interaction okay based on that value we can get the data for the next list and another way is by using the get cursor statement get cursor statement will return the field name and field value where the user has done the interaction by using get cursor statement we can restrict the user to interact with the particular column values on the list okay and what else to generate heading for the basic list we handle a event called as top of page to generate the heading for the second list we handle a event called as top of page during line selection okay and to generate footer for basic list or secondary list we must handle a event called as what end of page whenever the end of, end of page event is triggered only when the end of page is reached okay for this we need to use the addition what line count as part of report statement by using this line count option we can reserve number of lines per page number of footer lines okay when the number of lines reserved if it is already consumed by the event stop of page or top of page during line selection it leads to what runtime error list page overflow okay that's it so any questions we i'll check this issue why this offset logic what we got in the last class okay i didn't got opportunity to look into this today i'll try this you also try what are the issue we are getting what when you are extracting the portion of the string in the 51st program in the earlier program we had that issue that uh, we are getting the material number and suffix with some zero and space okay so offset logic is not working exactly for what uh, the material number column okay so let me check you also please try right so so far we are getting the data only from what one table okay so tomorrow onward we'll see how to get the data from what multiple tables 
by using what single select query by using one select query i should be able to get the data from two or more tables so that part we'll discuss start discussing from tomorrow onwards done so i'll wind up for today we'll continue tomorrow uh, there's one question <clears throat> yeah raghavendra uh, sir uh, this is regarding uh, when we click uh, when uh, uh, when we use hide statement uh, uh, and when we click on the particular uh, line item at that moment sap will uh, refresh the complete uh, uh, hide memory area correct except 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 the, that yeah. that value where we have done the interaction correct right right so uh, when again when we go back it will again fill the, all the values is it yes obviously because again we are looping and uh, using the write statement na? so again okay. when the write statement is executed after every write we are using the hide statement so again hide memory area gets filled gets filled okay, okay sir clear clear thank you Uh, new batch for ABAP and cross apps. Uh, cross apps would be uh, maybe it will take some more time, uh, Vamshi. But ANA batch uh, probably I may start in another one week or so. But the timings would be nine to ten. Timings for ABAP and would be nine to ten. Probably in one week, not yet confirmed. Cross apps, it would be after September 20th. <clears throat> Oops, of app. Oops, of app. Not yet uh, decided, Sayed. Oops, of app. Actually, we started at uh, 9 o'clock, but again, people are asking different slots. So I have not continued that batch. I have taken only two sessions and I kept it on hold. So if I'm having sufficient strength only, I can start. I cannot start for four or five members. No? So minimum 10 members, if it's there, I can start at 9 o'clock. Okay. Right? It, so, it, yeah. It will be online, is it? Yeah, yeah. Abapana, yes, it's online only. Okay. All, all batches will be online, Raghavendra. Online and uh, classroom. But UI5 and ANA will be only online. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hello, hello, sir. Ah, Sayed. Uh, sir, I want to talk with you. Can I uh, call you in five minutes? No, no, no. I'm having another batch. I'm already getting late. You can do one thing. You can call me at 9 o'clock. 9 to 10, I'm free. Okay, okay, TK. Yeah. Chalada, sir, winding up, we'll continue tomorrow.